So welcome back to Benis Retro or Benis Evercade. Um, what I'm doing with these videos is I am actually playing through uh, all my Evercade cartridges. Um, mainly because I really want to revisit all of them. I love getting these in the mail every other month. Uh, a couple of Evercade cartridges and that, then I spend some time playing them. Some of them stick around, some of them I put on the shelf. Um, but I, I really want to revisit them. And today we're doing this one. This is the second cartridge. Namco Museum Collection 1. I think this comes with the original Evercade. Um, so pretty much everyone who bought the Evercade in the beginning had this one. Uh, what is however kind of bad about this one is that uh, it doesn't work on the Evercade Versus. Both the Namco cartridges do not work on, on the Evercade Versus, which is the one that that you um, hook up, can hook up your, to your TV. This only works on the handhelds. I mean, an early contract, contractual issue that, that Evercade did with Namco. But I'm happy to have this. Um, it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting cartridge. It's it's uh, they don't really do Evercade cartridges like this anymore, mainly because now they have arcade titles. And this is actually a lot of arcade titles, but it's the NES versions of those arcade titles. However, we're quite lucky because in my view, the NES versions of these arcade titles are actually really good. Uh, Namco put some effort into making these good. Uh, and there's some, some, some interesting oddities here as well. Uh, but let's see. Let's see which ones are my top three games and will I recommend this cartridge? Now here's a stone cold classic. It's TikTok. I never saw TikTok back in the day in the arcades. Uh, I mean, I grew up during that era. I, I'm born in 1977 and TikTok was released in uh, 1982. Uh, but I never saw it when, when growing up. But I remember really well when MAME became a thing and arcade emulation became a thing like in the late 90s, early 2000s. I played TikTok and I was really enamored by it. And later on when it came out on, on, on uh, Xbox Live Arcade, in the, in the early days of the Xbox 360, I, Dig Dug is a really good game. Uh, and it kind of shows the uniqueness of the Namco titles at the time. Namco were really at the forefront in the early arcade days. And Dig Dug is a prime example of that. Um, it's it's a, just a lovely, fun game. You you dig around, you pop up, <laughs> pop up the enemies like balloons, but the best thing is if you get the rocks to follow them, because then you get the highest score. And rinse and repeat. Just a really, really fantastic title. And another Stone Cold classic. It's Mappy. Uh, and another title that shows the uniqueness and the inventiveness of, of Namco in the early arcade days. This is a 1983 game originally. And here we have the NES version, which is a great conversion, just like TikTok. These are really, really strong conversions. Uh, Mappy. It's just another really, really fun game. I, I love playing it. It's it's fast, it's it's kind of funny. And um, you slam the doors on, on the enemies. You are on your trampolines trying to find your treasures. Um, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a mouse uh, stealing stuff. It's, it's just fun. It's fast. It's a, it's a classic arcade game. Um, they don't really make them better than this in 1983. Uh, a fantastic game, and a fantastic conversion. Now here we have something interesting and unique. And one of the first kind of prime examples of why you should uh, think about getting an Evercade. Star Luster. A game that has been never released in the West. Um, uh, the first release is this Evercade release, uh, as far as I know. Uh, from Japan in 1985. Uh, it's quite unique. And um, yeah, what, what it is basically is that you, you fly around the sector, you're trying to save the galaxy. Uh, there's different types of enemies. It's, it's 3D. I mean, I've never seen a game like this for an 8-bit console. It's really, really impressive. It's almost like a, a, like a budget small-time elite. It's, not, it's not, not as epic as elite, but it's... Um, yeah, it's 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 arcadey. It's fun. Uh, it's kind of tough. I, I'm I'm I've had a tough time trying to 
to kill all these enemies and it's just super impressive. So what did I think of this overall as a cartridge? Is this something you should chase after if you don't have it? Um, not really I would say. I mean this is an early title. It, it contains inferior versions of all these arcade games. However, they are really good inferior versions. They are really good conversions, most of them. And I, I would say, if you really love Dig Dug and Mappy and, and uh, Pac-Man, then go for it. But really, if you're chasing after something rare, then Starluster is absolutely something to chase after. It's a really strong title, but it's not an essential buy. I would say, yes, buy it if you're really into the NES arcade conversions and uh, really interested in Starluster. Overall, I didn't like the the racing titles for the. Uh, I think they're both Super Nintendo titles, and they were not good. Sorry, uh, I didn't like them. And Metal Mar Marines looks really interesting. However, it looks really complex, and um, I don't really have time for this. Um, I like complex games. It it kind of looked a little bit uh, like Herzog's Y, which is one of my favorite Mega Drive games growing up. Uh, but I don't know. I didn't get into it. I tried. I played for like half an hour. Just didn't figure it out. Uh, let me know in the comments if you really love Metal Marines and 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 why I should maybe revisit it. But overall, it's an it's an okay okay cartridge. Not an essential purchase. But really, if you're looking for Star Luster, then go for it. It's a unique, interesting title. Really, really unique and different. And yeah, let me know in the comments. Did I miss something? Am I, am I being really stupid in my selections? Please comment and uh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching.